This is for Biology 223 Genetics, and I'd like to discuss a paper and, and uh, go through a problem related to this paper. This is a paper published in Science in 2017, and it's, it's, easy, it's easy in our curriculum to neglect the um, non-human and non and, and model organisms that aren't related to uh, human biology and um, it would be foolish to neglect the diversity of biology because many of our very fundamental un uh, understandings of biology that are generalizable to all organisms uh, including humans show up in, in organisms uh, quite distal quite distantly related to humans. This is a nice example. So this is a science uh, short article, so it's called a, a research, um, maybe it's called a report, and it's given a subject, plant science, which I think is, is a little bit silly because I think it's really more about RNA and, and regulation of gene expression, and that's what makes it interesting and that's why it was published. It's not published because it's about plants, it was published because of this finding that are generalizable. So, evolution of flower color pattern through selection on regulatory small RNAs. So, flowers are important to plants and one might say that as the uh, central hallmark of reproduction in flowering plants, then there's a massive amount of gene regulation uh, focused on flowering, flowering time, on flowers, and, and pollination, and, and, and prevention of selfing. And, and just as in, let's say, humans, we expect there to be a lot of gene regulation involved in reproduction, including courtship and the rearing of the young and, and so on. Uh, okay, so there's a quite a brief abstract. And notice what it starts as small RNAs regulate genes in plants and animals. So they're starting with a, a very broad phenomenon of small RNAs. That is, a small RNAs as opposed to messenger RNAs or structure RNAs. These small RNAs can be typed into different, um, different ways, typically by their biogenesis, um, and they have different modes of action. The most obvious ones, uh, the textbook will discuss, um, textbook uh, chapter on regulation of gene expression eukaryotes discusses the difference between microRNAs and small interfering RNAs. That's, that's, a, that's a typing based on, on biogenesis and they can work by different mechanisms. A very typical mechanism for a microRNA is to uh, interfere with translation. There are other mechanisms where there can be direction so that the mRNA is, uh, has a very short li lifetime. Um, there can be mechanisms where it interacts with the transcriptional machinery at that locus and causes um, um, suppression of trans transcriptional initiation by uh, chromatin formation and modification of histones. And, okay, and peewee interacting RNAs. But so they're, they're starting with the phenomenon to show that this is a, a part of a very broad phenomenon. And I don't think it's, I think it's not very useful to get um, too much in the details of the different modes of the different mechanisms or different processes of biogenesis um, as, opposed, as opposed to it is important to understand the different possible mechanisms because new mechanisms are arising to uh, coming to our attention. Here we show that population-wide differences in color patterns in snapdragon flowers are caused by an inverted duplication that generates S R and small RNAs. So what happens is we have means of, 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 of change of evolution. Uh, this is somewhat discussed in chapter seven, but it's also discussed later in molecular evolution, which we don't cover. So let's imagine we have a locus with an open reading frame there can be rearrangements also of the sort mechanisms discussed in the variation of chromosome structure and function where this uh, this sequence is copied in somewhere else so gene duplication that's a major mode of of, of, um, of evolution and it can be done in a tandem sense or in this case a opposed uh, um, uh, um, inverted repeat sense, so if we, if we talk about promoters, we might talk tandem or um, 
if they're same direction, we would say tandem or convergent or divergent. In this case, um, in this case, uh, we're we're looking at the DNA sequence where the, there's an inverted repeat. So it's copied and it's inverted and put somewhere else. So that's that's not an unusual phenomenon. And here we have that an inverted repeat that generates small RNAs. So you can imagine that RNAs are generated and the importance of an inverted repeat is that the sequence of the RNA here will be complementary to the sequence here. So an inverted repeat, when small, generates a hairpin. When large, size of whole gene, there might be a very long possibility or fragments that can become uh, um, RNAs that, even if broken up, can be um, uh, complementary to other parts. Certainly, it could be one uh, um, very large double-stranded RNA resulting from this. And color patterns in flowers, well, is that important? Sure. What happens if a flower, uh, why does a flower exist? Why does a flower have a pattern, a color pattern? It, it does so to attract a pollinator. What does a pollinator need to use? Uh, what is a pollinator attracted to? Certain patterns, patterns that indicate where the nectar is. Uh, and so what happens if we have one pattern that works and a different pattern that works? we might have bimodal selection, and that's what this is about. Let me, let me continue. The complexity and size of the transcripts indicate the duplication represents an intermediate in the pathway to microevolution, microRNA evolution. This is what is the importance of the article, and that's why it's a little bit silly to label it plant science, because this is, uh, the finding here is that they are showing, which hadn't been shown before as far as I can tell, that this idea of an inverted repeat by which a sequence is duplicated and inverted then generates uh, RNAs that are a long RNA that is self-complementary to make a large double-stranded DNA and that through time this inverted repeat can evolve into something that creates lots of little RNAs and those little RNAs can then can function to uh, uh, regulate gene expression, um, in this case, as microRNAs. So that's the big finding, that this is an intermediate on the path to microRNAs, and this gives us insight in where do microRNAs come from? Do they come by chance? Are they shifting around? Or are they coming about through this kind of mechanism? And this, then, is what makes the paper important, that they have insight and example of, of a microRNA in process evolving. The small RNAs represent a pigment, pigment repress a pigment biosynthesis gene creating a yellow highlight at the site of pollinator enter, right, entry. So this is right, it's the pollinator, the color pattern of the flower, the flower exists to attract pollinators and have them function well. And so we can have one pattern that functions, another pattern that functions, but a mix in between doesn't work. So we can have a bimodal selection. This comes up here. A, the inverted duplication exhibits steep climbs in allele frequency in natural hybrid zone. Um, this is to say that um, this flower pattern works and this flower pattern works, but in between doesn't, so we have what's climbed. That's a gradient in the trait. So where these naturally, geographically overlap, you might think, oh, we're gonna have something in between, but because of selection, on this and selection on this and selection against this, what we have is a very steep gradient across this. So in this zone here, the, the, by selection being for one pattern or the other pattern, we see a very steep gradient of the trait through, 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 the, um, through um, physical distance. Um, so that's, that's um, indicate, shows that, okay, showing that the ileo is under selection, it's under strong selection. And you can imagine that flowers that have a pattern that works, this or that, will function and have progeny. And flowers that have a muddled pattern, it might not work. And then so there's a strong selection. There's different ways to see that, but they've seen it by this cline in, in the ileo frequency. Thus, Okay, so now we're talking, those are the findings with some logic, and now we have the significance. Thus, regulatory interactions of evolutionarily recent small RNAs can be acted upon by selection and contribute to the evolution of phenotypic diversity. So they're saying that, look, we have some possible chance event where this gene is, is duplicated and, 
and, uh, and as an inverted repeat, and then generates this um, double-stranded RNA, which can generate um, RNAs that inhibit a, a um, color uh, synthesis, a pigment synthesis pathway, and that is then creates a phenotype, and that phenotype is acted upon by the pollinator. A pollinator prefers one or the other, or both, but not the mix, right? It can't be the mix. And so there's a very strong purifying selection and that this is a mechanism by which RNAs are generated. So this is, this is a really nice example. And let's, let's go here to, to see, um, well, I'm sorry I don't have it in color. Um, let me show you what, the, what this is. So we have a biosynthetic um, pathway in which something colorless precursors and the action of CHS gene go to another colorless precursor which on the action of CHI turn into the purple, uh, that's purple ink, anthrocyanins and um, otherwise that same precursor goes by action of this uh, CGT to another compound which is colorless and then finally to this uh, yellow uh, orone. So we have uh, colorless precursors that are then can turn into um, so we have activity so let, let's 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 think of this um, we have uh, biosynthetic genes their gene products have these activities and what this tells us let's go back there we have this sulf uh, where is it so the sulf here is the small so they show it here this is the CGT pathway, and this gene product here is inhibited by the double strand, the inverted, the inverted repeat. So it looks like this underwent a, this underwent a uh, duplication, inverted, and then created a new locus, sulf, and we can see that sulf has turned into something that generates something with an inverted repeat that can generate uh, small RNAs that inhibit the, and these then are processed into double-stranded RNAs of some length, which then get processed into, into small RNAs that inhibit uh, that gene. So let's diagram it here as a T arrow and solve gene. So as a result, let's let's um, look at this here. I think this would be small enough. So we have genes that are of interest. This is the CHS, we have it CHI, we have the CGT, we have the SOLF locus that generates not an enzyme but a, a small RNA, and we have the AS1. So let's imagine that we have a, uh, a heterozygote at all of those, and let's imagine they're unlinked. So here's a problem that we're going to do. Let's imagine a problem where we have uh, heterozygote, which is positive and negative each, and we look at the cross of that with another that's heterozygous at each, and let's consider the frequency of which uh, that would work. Um, I'm going to have to do this in two parts, so that's the end of the first part here.